Hello, everyone. I uh, just want to make sure that uh, everyone can hear me. If uh, Robert, you can hear me okay with the audio? I'm hearing you fine. And um, it, it may be a good check, uh, or just to make sure, if you want to type a number one in your chat box, that would help us verify that everybody can hear us fine. Okay, Jerry. Okay. Hello and welcome. Uh, as Robert mentioned, my name is Jerry Sedone. I am the Preform Manager in the Alpha Engineered Materials Group. Although Alpha offers a wide variety of types and sizes of preforms, We'll be focusing today on a standard tape and reel product line, a very robust and proven method for implementing tape and reel preforms in your process. We'll call this sem seminar Elimination of Way. So let's go ahead and get started. Although thought of preforms come in a variety of different shapes and sizes and address many different applications in PCB assembly, as well as various industrial automotive, cabling, and component assembly applications, this seminar is going to focus on the use of solder preforms to eliminate wave soldering operation in a mixed technology process. A mixed technology process, what is it? It can rep represent several different PCB assembly processes. But today, again, we'll look into the most common mixed technology process in PCB assembly, surface mount reflow soldering and wave soldering. A typical example of this type of process consists of reflowing all surface mount components through a surface mount reflow oven, followed by breaking down and resetting up for a wave soldering step that solders all the through hole type components. The material in this training was gathered from an intensive joint study conducted by Cisco Systems and ourselves, Alpha Assembly, a few years ago. Cisco Systems, Cisco uh, had determined at the time uh, the benefit of eliminating wave was compelling enough to develop a set of guidelines around the technology. This seminar, actually, what it does is highlight those guidelines that uh, Cisco de developed. Let's first take a look at the overview of today's training. First, we'll talk a little, a little bit more about pit and tape technology. Um, then we'll quickly overview tape and reel preforms and how they are used in assembly. Next, we'll consider how preforms can help you eliminate waves and show you a simple customer value proposition, which is supported by the quality and reliability benefits of using preforms. Then we'll go through a qualification process to determine if uh, a board qualifies for elimination of waves using the alpha checklist for success. And then finally, we'll take a look at how you go about selecting right preforms for the application. Before getting into the benefits of preforms used in pin and paste, let's discuss pin and paste in a little bit more detail. Pin and paste is an SMT uh, assembly methodology used for through hole components. It generally consists of using overprinted solder paste to reflow and fill the plated through holes used for the component as an alternative to wave soldering. An example of a through hole component is illustrated at the far left, and on the right, is a typical overprint pattern used on a, on a PCB. The goal, as stated by IPC 610, is to fill at least 75% of the volume between the plated through hole and the lead pin with solder. Printing enough solder paste can be very challenging, especially when dealing with a thicker board or when there's limited space around the pin. Additionally, with certain types of solder paste, excessive overprinting can generate random solder balls. Solder preforms address these issues is offering a high yield alternative when soldering paste volume is inadequate. And that's important that, you know, preforms in this case, overprinting is a very well known process in, in filling hole or in hole fill technology. And by no means are we looking for preforms to substitute for it, but actually enhance or uh, improve the performance of this type of technology. Um, a common example is a multi-lead connector like the one shown here. In this case, the overprint of solder paste was limited by the pitch of the pin. At the picture on the left, we see the required amount of overprinted solder paste on the outermost pin and insufficient printing on the center row of pins. At the picture on the right, we can see how tape and reel preforms were added to the inadequate uh, print areas to increase the solder volume. 
So indeed, tape and roll preforms can enable pen and paste technology. Now a little bit more about tape and roll preforms. ELSA has the largest variety of standard size tape and roll preforms in the marketplace today. Our standard size preforms match the standard chip capacitors that you may be familiar with, like 0805, 0603, 0402, and even 0201. They are offered in the most common leaded and lead-free solder alloys. ELSA even supports a low temperature alloy that we'll, cover, that we'll cover a little bit later on in the seminar. The point is they are packaged much the same way as chip capacitors using standard tape and roll packaging as the delivery system. The solder preforms can be easily picked from the tape pocket and placed on the printed circuit board at the same time with the surface mount component using a stick standard stick, uh, pick and place uh, equipment. A total of 14 different sizes are available to enable the fine tuning of solder volume. To help promote tape and roll preforms, we actually offer sample reels of 1,000 pieces for customer testing free of charge. So keep that in mind if you're looking to test something out in your, in your process, uh, get your alpha rep in, in to talk with you or your HISCO rep and, and um, take a look at how preforms can help you solve some of these issues that we'll be talking about. Hey, Jerry, this might be a good opportunity for me to mention uh, that we, that all the attendees on today's uh, webinar are going to get an email from HISCO. And in that email, basically, it, 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 first of all, we're saying thank you, but it's also kind of a recap of this presentation, um, but really a link as well to if you would like a sample reel of preforms or like to learn more, uh, then basically all you do is click on that link and that email will either come to myself or one of your one of our HISCO colleagues and we will make sure not only to get you more information but more importantly to get you some sample reels so that you can actually test on your product. Okay, Jerry. Okay, thanks. Just what are tape and reel preforms and how are they used? Alpha tape and preforms allow the user to selectively and accurately increase and control solder volume using standard pick and place equipment. They contain no flux and are 100% metal alloy. They rely actually on the excess flux in the solder paste to reflow properly. They are placed in solder paste much the same like chip caps using standard pick and place equipment and vacuum nozzles. Due to Alpha's well honed manufacturing process and the fact that preforms are 100% alloy, the amount of solder delivered by the preform is very accurate and completely repeatable. And that's very important to understand is that if you are having a reliability issue because of inadequate solder volume, as many of you may know, um, solder paste is made up of 50% flux and 50% um, solder alloy. And that can vary a bit and can give you varying results as, as, as well as some other reliability issues like solder splatter and those sorts of things. As I said, preforms are 100% solder volume, and so when you place them, you know that you're getting all of that solder coming out of the preform, and um, it's very repeatable from board to board. Uh, likewise, flux residue is also reduced, so you're, you're using less solder paste, but, uh, but more solder alloy, so it reduces the amount of flux residue. And finally, as we've discussed, overprinting solder paste is commonly used in assemblies where through-hole components are combined with surface mount SMT applications. However, the additional solder paste volume generated by the overprint is sometimes still not adequate to completely fill plated through-holes. Three forms can be easily placed in solder paste and compensate for the inadequate solder volume from the overprint. Having a bit of a technical issue here, bear with me. There we go. To better understand the advantages of, of uh, surface mount over waste soldering technology. Let's examine what's going on during the soldering process of two hole components. Let's take a look at a wave soldering at wave soldering first at the left. In wave soldering, the flux, pin, and plated through hole all help to carry the molten solder up the barrel. 
as it travels over the wave. Well, in this process, there, there's this, always a temperature gradient from the top side to the bottom side of the board. Since, temperature, since solder likes the higher heat on the bottom side, it's reluctant to flow up the barrel despite the propensity to wet up the plated barrel and tin surfaces. At the same time, internal copper layers or ground planes act against pulling the heat from the barrel. The combination of these factors often result in underfill barrels, especially in thicker multi-layer boards. Now let's take a look at reflow soldering to the right. A temperature gradient does not exist. Unlike wave, the board is pre-soaked in heat until the temperature is the same throughout the board. When the solder paste reaches reflow temperatures, the entire board, including the internal layers, are all at the same temperature. Without temperature gradients, the solder flow is dominated by the wetting force and freely flows into the barrel. 100% barrel fill is routinely possible provided the proper amount of solder is present. Freeforms offer the ability to provide the proper amount of solder to complement the solder paste volume. Let's take a look at a real life example. So I showed you an animated example on the previous page. Here's an actual real life example. Here we see a cross section through pins on two different boards. The board on the left was at, uh, surface mount reflow, and the board on the right was wave solder. In the wave soldering example, you can see the typical result, uh, result in, I'm sorry, on the one on the right, you can see typical result in incomplete hole fill experience on high layer count circuit boards with lead-free solder. So you can see that we barely reached 50% uh, hole fill in that second hole there on the right with the wave soldering. Now, so what I'm going to try and do in this video clip, we demonstrate the effectiveness of tape and reel preforms as an alternative to wave. Here you see a cross section of a board assembly with pins inserted to represent the through hole component. Notice the different size and number of preforms at each pin location and the, and the differences in the resultant solder joints formed at each position after reflow. You'll see the increased solder volume is evident in the size of the fillet. Also notice the symmetry in the fillets formed on the top and bottom side of the board. We'll talk more about this joint phenomenon later. But what I'm going to do is try to play this video clip. And I, you know, I know this is over uh, the internet and over the IP, so it may be a little stuttery. Just for your reference, you can go to Alpha's website under preform products and get a, a, a video uh, and, and watch this video real time and maybe get a better uh, a view of it. Uh, but what you're seeing here um, is a three pins going through a board. The first pin on the right here has no preforms associated to it. The one on the in the middle has two preforms associated, and the one on the left has only a single preform. And the idea here is that you can actually see the, um, the effect of having zero preforms, one preform, and two preforms to see what the difference in the solder volume is. And what I'm seeing here is that uh, we're not, it's not playing the video for us. So I apologize for the technical difficulty again. I, I, I ran this beforehand, but apparently in the webinar here, it's not working. So we'll continue on. But it actually worked okay. It wasn't great, but you could get the idea. Um, okay, great. We did see the reflow. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Thanks, Robert. Mm -hmm. So, Robert, this might be a good break point um, about halfway through the, the, the series here. Okay, so let's let's pause for a second. I want to make sure that if anybody has a question pertaining to the information shared already, that we give ample opportunity you know, for, uh, to answer those questions. So we're going to open the floor. Um, we'll spend, uh, if I don't hear a response back in about 15 seconds, then we'll move forward. Any questions? Okay, Jerry, continue on, please. Okay. Okay, now that we better understand pin and paste and preforms, let's talk briefly about what a mixed technology process is, and then the value proposition of eliminating waste soldering in a mixed technology process. As I mentioned a little bit earlier, a mixed technology process uses multiple methods for assembling components to print circuit boards. 
In general, a mixed technology assembly process consists of four steps and a lot of board handling. At a high level, the steps are reflow the surface mount number one, reflow the bottom side of the board, take and place surface mount components on the top and bottom side of the board, and reflow them through a surface mount oven. The next step is to carry the board over to the wave soldering system, go through a pick and place operation, run through wave soldering, and then finally inspect and rework the components that have not soldered properly going through the wave soldering process. The details of each step are shown here. Now the value proposition, very simply, is consider the value of converting this four-step soldering process to a two-step soldering process. That is, eliminate wave and rework processes. Sounds interesting? Let's take it a little bit further. The wave process, which includes rework, is a costly step in a mixed technology process. In general, wave alone makes up every, anywhere from 35 to 45 percent of the total assembly cost. Eliminating the cost of the wave step lowers your assembly cost by at least a third. This savings more than offsets the cost of adding some preforms onto your board. Complementing the savings benefit are the reliability advantages gained through the use of preforms, which is, you know, in a sense, very hard sometimes to justify. But uh, it's a very important adder that you get and benefits that you get from preforms. So let's go ahead and take a look at the quality and reliability benefits gained by transitioning waste soldering to surface mount reflow soldering using tape and grill preforms. First, the quality benefits. Defects due to inadequate barrel fill in plated through holes are eliminated. And that means eliminated, not reduced, but eliminated. And pin to pin shorts commonly experienced as a solder wave are eliminated. Higher first pass yields are routinely experienced since rework on reflow boards is uncharacteristic. In every assembly process, the more exposure to handling, the more likely damage uh, will occur. Since we have virtually eliminated the wave and rework steps, the likelihood of damage due to a handling, someone dropping boards or someone, um, um, you know, uh, causing an ESD event or something like that is reduced significantly. What about the reliability benefits? Integrated circuits are typically designed for a minimal number of thermal exposures to enable the assembly process. By eliminating wave, we reduce the number of thermal cycles and thus extend the lifetime of the IP. Since wave requires certain mechanical clearance on the PCB to be maintained for reliable assembly, we can expect any new board layout to be less restrictive. This means component spacing and locations are improved and could be optimized for better performance. Additionally, plated through hole proximity to ground plane layers are no longer critical to prevent thermal heat seeking concerns we have in wave. So it opens up a whole nother can of worms for you, if you will, as far as capabilities, uh, filling more real estate on your board, uh, because now you don't have to be concerned so much with overprinting. So those are, again, a lot of benefits of putting preforms and maybe even considering preforms. Uh, as a permanent accessory on your on your PCB assembly. So now we'll take you through the steps of assessing your mixed technology process and determining if, if it is a candidate for elimination of wave using paste plus tape and reel preforms. There's many factors that can influence the success of wave soldering to surface mount reflow transition process. They can involve the paste type used, temperature profiles, and mixed technology assembly techniques. Since we are specifically examining the use of preforms with pin and paste, we'll make some assumptions and reinsurances to let, uh, to let us remain focused on the use of preforms to eliminate waste. First, we will only convey techniques that have been proven through extensive DAOV within Alpha and in joint partnerships with some of our best customers. Second, the techniques we use assume a standard mixed technology is in place with similar steps to what we described earlier. Third, the solder paste has been selected and proven in this application. The circuit board assembly has been temperature profiled and all the joints are reaching adequate reflow temperatures. And finally, these techniques will assume we are reflowing in air or nitrogen.
Here are some general guidelines to follow when considering using preforms in paste. Overprinting, as I said early, earlier, should always be considered the first option for fully plated through holes. Remember we talked about overprint solder paste earlier in the webinar. Preforms are placed in paste and used to accurately increase solder volume. They contribute solder volume when overprinted paste is not adequate or there are space limitations around the through hole component. The sequence of component assembly is important when using tape and reel preforms to maximize assembly efficiency. The preforms are placed with chip capacitors and resistors. The rest of the surface mount components are placed next and the through hole components are placed last. And finally, another very important assembly sequence to consider for double-sided boards is when to assemble the through-hole components. In general, the through-hole components are soldered pinned down in, in the surface mount assembly process. They cannot be placed during the, sur the surface mount top side process, since, uh, uh, I'm sorry, top side assembly process, since the pins will protrude off the, the, uh, the, the, the bottom side of the board and interfere with the printing process. So these are just some general guidelines to keep in mind uh, when you're assessing your board as to whether or not you can convert it over to a surface mount board. Not all wave solder boards qualify as good candidates for transition to surface mount reflow. We've been able to identify a set of criteria to quickly characterize a board assembly as a candidate for elimination of wave. We call it our checklist for success and it highlights critical characteristics desired for a successful implementation of elimination of wave and can be helped uh, and can be used to help assess if elimination of wave is worth pursuing. So let's take a, a closer look at each of these. First, it is important to recognize whether a through hole component can tolerate reflow temperature. The reflow temperature varies between 230 and 250 degrees C depending on whether the paste is tin lead or lead free alloy like sent, like SAC 305. This could be a showstopper. If you're unwilling or unable to change over the component, uh, that could be a problem. The good news is, is most durable component manufacturers are well aware of pin and paste te techniques and provide SMT rated versions of their components. So it may be a little bit easier to swap over than what you think. Um, for instance, at, at Cisco, they basically eliminated all item codes for any non-reflowable components. So in their library of parts, they only placed in components that were, uh, even though they were through hole components, that could tolerate reflow temperatures. Co uh, component standoff height is adequate. The true hole component must have standoffs that raise it off the board and provide the path and clearance for the preform to flow under it to the plane through hole. If, if the appropriate clearance is not provided, solder spheres can form as shown here. In this case, paper reel preforms are placed in the solder paste overprint outside the perimeter of the connector. As the board began to reflow, the preforms were dragged in with the overprint as the molten solder started filling the plane through hole. The solder spheres were formed as the molten solder started filling the plate through holes because the preforms were blocked by the plastic connector housing as they were being dragged through the plate through hole and formed a sphere as the solder came out of its molten state. Here we see a side view of the connector illustrating the stack of the solder paste and preform under a connector that could cause a solder sphere issue. In this example, the connector has a standoff built in as shown in orange. But is there adequate clearance to allow for a preform to flow? You can use the following equation to determine the allowable preform height. From the component data sheet, take the component standoff height and subtract the stencil thickness minus an additional three mils of clearance to account for stack up tolerances. The result is the maximum allowable preform height. So you can calculate what your maximum preform height is under that can fit underneath the component based on knowing your stencil height and the you know the standoff height on your component which you can get from the data sheet and of course your uh, stencil thickness. Once you've determined the allowable height, refer back to the tape and roll preform table shown here. It defines the standard preform size and the volume of solder produced from each. 
Dimension C describes the height of the preform. Choose a height less than or equal to the allowable preform height you calculate. Now, in a case where you may not have sufficient height, there's ways to get around that and still get the solder volume. For instance, you could be using an 0603, which has, uh, let's look at metric here, 1.024 cubic millimeters of solder, but it may be too high. The C dimension may be too high at 0.8, and maybe you don't need to go to something smaller. The point is, is there, there's a variety of smaller size preforms, and there's nothing to say that you can't place more than one preform in an overprint or in, in paste on, on a uh, board. So keep that in mind that there's, you know, even though you may not have the clearance, there's ways to get out of it. Another way, a side note here, if your component does not have standoff built into it, it also offers what's called a true height spacer that can be placed under the component and used to lift the component off the printed circuit board, creating adequate clearance for the paste and preform to flow under the component and into the hole. You see a sequence of events there, and you can kind of see how they're placed. You place the preforms and the spacers. Um, the spacers are actually printed. Uh, you print paste, and you can solder the spacers right to the circuit board. Um, the true high spacers are packaged in tape and reel and can be picked in place just the same as any other sur standard surface mount component. The funny thing is, is that they actually remain there after the reflow has taken place. And we actually, they're actually copper spacers that are gold plated. And so they have no effect on reliability or issues that you might experience with oxidation or anything like that because, like I said, they are plated. The standoff built into the pin, design, pin is not desirable. Another component characteristic to consider is whether the through hole component has a standoff built into the pin as shown here. Although the standoff may provide enough clearance height to the, for the preform, it causes other issues. Let's take a closer look on the next slide. The illustration of the right represents the connector we just saw with the standoff built into the pin. As you can see, the standoff blocks the plated hole, and in this case prevents both preform and paste from flowing easily down the plated through hole. At the left is an example of a connector with standoffs offsets from the pin. Here you can see there is plenty of clearance for the paste and preform to flow easily down the plated through hole with little chance of solder smears or inadequate hole fill. This connector would be an excellent candidate for elimination of waste. You want to avoid printing paste under the connector standoff with preforms in paste. It is not to say the paste when reflowed would not find its way into the through hole. But what may happen is it could drag the preform into the standoff and block it from flowing into the plated through hole, causing solder sphere, uh, a solder sphere effect for inadequate hole fill. Notice the connector at the lower left. Here's an example of a good candidate for elimination away. Notice the position of the standoff and the clearance around the pin. Make sure you're aware of the issues caused by excessive pin protrusion. Let's talk about them. Excessive pin protrusion can reduce hole fill in a surface mount application. As the component leads are inserted into the board and through the solder paste, some of the paste is carried out to the top of the pin. If the pin tip protrudes out the other side of the board, just a small amount, as shown at the left, most of the solder typically wets back to the hole and pad during reflow and forms an adequate solder joint. However, if the pin tip protrudes too excessively, the solder paste that was carried out to the top through the tip of the pin can fall off during the reflow process and become stranded at the top of the pin. Stranding can result in the formation of large solder balls at the tip of the pin, as seen in the photo and x-ray images at the right. These solder balls not only cause reduced hole fill, but can eventually fall off and cause electrical shorts in your electronics packaging. For this reason, it is recommended that pin protrusion does not exceed 60 mils or 1.5 millimeters. Pins with blunt-headed tips are not desirable. They tend to make pin protrusion issues even worse. Tapered or round pins are preferred since they provide an unobtrusive path for solder to flow back to the hole, reducing the likelihood of stranding or solder ball formation. A way, to, a way around the blunt-ended pins or excessive pin protrusion is to mask the plated through hole so paste is not printed over the hole. 
and is not pushed out when the pin is inserted. In the illustration shown here, the black shapes represent the stencil and show a, how a bridge could be built in the stencil to block the hole. Different preform configurations shown in red are illustrated to demonstrate the methods for overcoming the loss of solder volume caused by blocking the hole. So obviously you're taking solder paint away from the uh, from the um, uh, port when you're when you're adding these, these uh, I'll call them gates to prevent uh, uh, solder from going down into the hole. But preform is more than compensate for any paint loss that you have there. There is not a common standard for pin to hole clearances. The pin to hole ratio varies from industry to industry. Preform paints can address a, a variety of pins to the hole ratios. Reliably, we can fill holes with the following pin to hole ratios. Keep in mind, clearances outside these bounds are possible but would need further testing. The minimum pin to hole ratio is the pin's diameter plus 15 mils or 0.38 millimeters. Less clearance will create problems of solder flow into the plated hole and make the preform placement more critical. The maximum pin to, hole, pin to hole ratio can be as much as the pin diameter plus 40 mil. Exceeding this value can create excessive voids or gaps in, in the barrel and weaken the solder joint. Using the checklist for success will help you determine quickly if your board is a good, bad, or challenging candidate for elimination of waves. Let's summarize what we've learned so far. We've talked about the use of tape and reel exact lower preforms with pin and paste to, over, to overcome hole fill challenges when converting a mixed technology process. We've given you a very convincing value added problem value-added proposition and providing an assessment tool called the Checklist for Success that allows you to quickly assess the possibility of converting over to a standalone SNC process. Now you need to go through the steps of selecting a preform for the application. To help with the assessment of your process and the calculations needed to determine the best preform size, Alpha has developed a helpful reference bulletin which contains all the steps to get you on your way. On one side you'll find all the calculations needed to help you choose the right preform size and reference table of all the off-the-shelf standard preform sizes available. On the flip side of the reference bulletin you'll find a checklist for success and a flow diagram that takes you through the steps of determining if your mixed technology process is fit for use for preform. Take advantage of this helpful tool and request it from your Alpha or HISCO representative today. Oh yes, and don't forget to request your free sample of preform brochures, which contains a small tape and reel strips of several different preform sizes that you can actually try out in your process. This concludes the training webinar. We greatly appreciate your time and attendance. Are there any questions? that I can take. Okay, don't be shy. Any questions? Is there anyone considering uh, converting to preforms or having issues with uh, whole fill or, or in general any sort of volume uh, issues with even surface mount components that preforms can indeed help with as well? Jerry, I'm not hearing anything. Yeah. Is that good? Well, uh, Jerry, really appreciate uh, the presentation. Great job. Um, for everybody on the line, we, obviously we've got a few minutes here, right? Again, this is Robert Wallace. I'm the Regional Marketing Manager, Channel Partner Manager for the Americas. Uh, and just to summarize what the, Jerry's key points, uh, solder preforms on tape and reel are extremely easy to use. You already have, uh, likely have the equipment for placing uh, those uh, devices now. They're in the same form factor that you, you use your passive components. Uh, so it's something that you're already familiar with. You already have the equipment uh, uh, on your shop floor 
uh, to accomplish that, it takes a little bit of playing with. Um, the information that we provide to you up front and the, uh, the, the uh, consultation that we provide up front will get you as close to the right size preforms as possible. We, we're very good about accurately predicting how much solder volume you're going to need um, and providing a preform to fit that. Uh, so don't be shy. Uh, we have sample reels available. Again, your, your HISCO field salesperson uh, can help you with that in association with the, their alpha colleagues. Uh, and like I said, you'll be getting an email with the information on how to basically request a, a sample, and we would be delighted to provide those for you. So uh, unless Dave and, and Mark, there's anything else? Hey, Robert, this is Mark. I did have one question for Jerry. Um, Jerry, I'm curious. I've heard of people using preforms for years for RF shields. Would you characterize the, the differences there and whether you need standoffs or not typically? Yeah, so um, the most effective means for using them with RF shields, and I didn't go into, uh, maybe I should have because we have a lot of time left, but into surface mount applications um, where there's insufficient um, solder volume to, to manage warped shields where shields, I'm sure many of you experience, sometimes become very warped, and a lot of you may have issues with um, filling the gap between the solder paste and the shield in some cases. And adding a preform into your surface mount pad and, and compensating for the, the, the uh, solder volume with a preform, you know, again, once you've defined it, uh, the preform, it's very repeatable. Adding, it increases the solder volume significantly. Um, and again, I, I would refer you to some of the videos on our website uh, that show the power of, you know, the, the volume increase that you can, you can obtain from uh, adding a preform into your solder paste. So, yes, there are very effective means for soldering shields, especially where you're having problematic areas of warpage causing gaps. Does that answer your question, Dave? Yes, yeah, thanks, Jerry. Hey, Jerry, I have a question from the audience. Um, sure. Are circles available for topside hole fill? Customer doesn't want to use SMT preforms. Yes, we make a variety of different sizes and shapes of preforms. In fact, we didn't go into it here, and, and maybe it's the next webinar down the line. We'll start to talk about some of our other variety of preforms available. But yes, we offer disc shapes, washer shapes, uh, and squares, rectangles, many different shapes. And the, the good news is, is that we have over um, a 1,000 different tools available to us. And each one of those tools has varying thicknesses to them. So I'm sure we can find something to help you solve your issue. Uh, does that answer the, 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 the person's question? So yes, we do have round shaped preforms. So Jerry, it might be helpful to, to explain when you say tool, what do you, what do you mean by tool? Some people may not be familiar with that reference. Right. So our, 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 the tape and roll preforms, which we refer to in this, um, in this presentation, are standard size preforms that essentially you can get off the shelf. Literally, uh, all of our sales offices uh, support Cisco by providing, and even HISCO, I know, keeps stock in their local offices. So pretty much you can get these things, I'll, I'll say, off the shelf. Many of our other preforms come in different sizes, and it's impossible to stock different sizes. So essentially when we get an order, the preforms are made to order. The point is, is that the, the tools that we have that make those, so the tools are used to fabricate the preforms. So let's take a washer, for instance. We have a washer preform. It has a certain outside diameter and a certain inside diameter. The tool was used to stamp the preform out of the solder ribbon that uh, we use to fabricate these, these parts. So tools are, uh, we have a standard set of tools, um, and we're constantly adding to that tool list every day that allows you to choose a variety of different sizes and shapes that, that we have in stock. So um, I hope that answers your question. It, it certainly does, Jerry. Um, Jerry, here's, a, here's another question from the audience. How many pieces in a sample? A thousand piece sample rolls. Now, in that, 
in that little brochure that I showed you on the previous slide, we send these brochures out. This is separate than the, than the sample that you may request from your HISCO rep. These are brochures that we offer to talk a little bit more about how preforms are used. And, but in this, in this brochure comes, what is it, five little strips of preforms at different sizes. Uh, that you can actually peel those off and place them right in your solder paste and try them out to see how they work. They're lead free um, and, and work just like uh, our preforms on the tape and reel. But yes, the answer is there's a thousand piece on a sample reel. Okay, any additional questions? Dave, do you see any other uh, typed questions? No, I think that's it. Okay, Mark, anything else? Nothing on my end. Thanks, Robert. Well, on behalf of HISCO and Alpha, we certainly, again, appreciate uh, your attending our webinar. Um, there's a, a whole uh, litany of other webinars upcoming. Please visit the HISCO website. There may be something of interest to you. Uh, please check your email uh, in the next few days because you will be getting an email uh, to say thank you for attending and then also give you information on how to, uh, to gain or to how to request samples, uh, request further information, or be visited by uh, your local HISCO field salesperson and or your alpha field salesperson. So with that, I will uh, close the proceedings for today. Again, thank you, and certainly hope you can make the upcoming webinars. Check the HISCO website. So, thank you very much, one and all. Thank you.